Spartan Seal on my lathe has been challenging from the beginning. I started with an HSS blade that somehow had a tendency to walk off of the tool holder and jam itself into the work when I least expected it. Then I changed to carbide but I have broken more inserts in tools than I'd like to admit. So today we're going to take the first step to improve this operation and that is making a solid tool post mounting block. This will replace the compound for most operations, but I still want to be able to bring it back easily whenever needed. And that means not readjusting any tool side. For that reason, the riser block needs to be the exact same height as the compound. Next, we need to think about the shape of the block. I was thinking of making it square, something along the lines of what Robin Rossetti did, but that was until I tried my faceplate. The problem is that, without the compound moving the tool forward, there's no way we can make any operation near the faceplate. To make it work we need to push the tool post closer to the spindle and that took me to Phil Vandalay's tool post design, which is what we're going to do today. Well, to be fair it will still have a bit of Robins, and maybe some Stefans too. As I said, I want to be able to switch between the compound and the riser block easily, so I think having the block registering on the cross slide will save me from careful alignments most of the times. But 5 thousandths difference over 4 inches is just not acceptable to take this face as a registration face so we need to do better. Ok, looks like the front side was ground parallel to the cross slide dovetail, so that will be our reference to fix the T-slots running faces. A light stone will help to even the reference face. And then we can go over to the milling machine and indicate the cross slide. A final check of the T-slot? Yeah, that needs fixing. And with all the running faces milled, we can recheck the cross slide on the lathe. That looks good enough. Back on the milling machine, we start by squaring our grey cast iron piece of stock. The face mill seems to do a nice job, but a fly cutter leaves a nicer finish, so we'll use that for the final passes. And just like that we have two finished faces, now we need to work on the other four. Let's start with the bottom one and make the registration fit for the cross slide. The roughing and mill does the majority of the work, while I'm using the cross slide to gauge when to stop and make the final passes with the finishing and mill. That feels really nice. Now we just need to make the chamfers and drill 4 holes for AMH screws. After that, we flip the part and since I don't have any gauge pins, I'll use the same drill bit to find the center of the holes. Now we need to make them a little bigger for cap screws. Normally this is done with a counter bar bit, leaving a 14.5mm hole for the 13mm cap screw heads. But I want a tighter tolerance on this because I want to avoid having chips trapped in the holes. So instead of the counter bar bit, I'll use a 10mm bit to pre-drill and then plunge a 12mm end mill to finish the pockets. Of course this means we need to turn the heads of the screws down to 11.8, which is not a problem as there's still plenty of meat to hold down the block. But you might have noticed that I've gone too deep. Actually, I didn't. 
I was thinking of making a cylindrical registration for the tool post, like the one on my compound, but I think leaving the top of the block flat will make it much more versatile in the future. For example, to rest a tool post grinder. This means a change of plans and a big chunk to remove from the top face. And all these cast iron chips make a mess. That's why before starting this project I improvised this cover for the mill. It seems to be working fine so far. But now we're getting very close to the final height of the block. So that's worth checking on the surface plate. We want the top and bottom to be parallel so we start by zeroing the surface gauge on one of the corners. Then we sweep the rest of the face looking for a deviation. And looks like we have some in both planes. I was kind of counting on the Y axis to be a little off. Because I know my mill's column flexes and that's something I cannot fix quickly. But I wasn't expecting such a difference on the X axis because I have trained the mill just a few days ago. Maybe the registration feet that we're resting against the vise are not actually parallel to the bottom. To check that I'll take a trustworthy parallel, in this case a 1 to 3 block. And use it to even the bottom face and measure the height to the feet. Looks like there's a difference between both feet, but I don't think that's significant. Anyway, we can try to improve it. Ok, so with one last pass to get to the final dimension, I think the best bet is to try to shim the block. Checking how we did with the shimming. Overall I think this is pretty good. We still have 5 tens due to the column flexing, but I think I'll live with that. Now I set the block on the vise, first at 60 degrees, then at 90, and use the fly cutter to finish the first end of the block. Then I'll do the same on the other end, taking most of the material with the roughing and mill first. And this completes the shape of the block. The next step is to fit the quick change tool post, and that's where I'll be taking some inspiration from Robin. Instead of having the tool post stud holding the tool post against rotation, which is caused by the cutting forces, I'll pin and clamp it. Then the stud will only be responsible for holding the tool post down. So let's start with the pin and you'll see what I mean. First I'll use a carbide drill to make a 6mm hole in the tool post. That will be for this pin, which was misaligning both halves of my 5C collet chuck. And with that done, we can reassemble the tool post. This time adding a few shims from a classic mini timing sprocket. This seemed perfect to take up the slack from the handle. Next, we need to make the corresponding hole on the cast iron block. So I'll mount the block back on the vise using the same shims used to skim the top. I'll do this to make sure all the drilling will be perfectly square to the top. Then, using an edge finder, we'll find the center for the pinhole, which will be 16mm from each edge. Now we can square the tool post and locate the center. I'll drill and tap an M12 thread for the tool post stud. Awesome! This L-shaped block was made of camera. I'll use it to trap the tool post against the corner and prevent it from moving in any direction. Because even though we have the pin, there's still some play between the stud and the stud hole. And if the tool post finds any chance of moving, the pin will still act as a pivoting point, and we don't want that. 
I think milling a fitting slot for the corner block will be a good way to make sure none of these moves. So we start with a 6mm end mill to rough the shape and then change to a 1mm cutter to finish and make small radius corners. But of course I broke the only one I had, so I had to change to a 2mm and that worked out nicely. Now we can fit the block and drill a 5mm clearance hole for a cap screw on the corner. Then we remove the block and drill and tap an M5 thread in the exact same location. These will guarantee the holes are perfectly aligned. The only thing left to do on this corner block is drill and tap for a couple of M8 set screws. These will be on opposite sides of the corner and as close to the top of the riser block as possible. Our goal here is to have the set screws pushing the tool post hard against the pin and avoid any lifting. And just like that, we are only some chamfers away from being done and try the new tool post mounting block. But before that, I'll cold blue these T-nuts I also made off camera. Finally, let's see how much of an enabler this really is. Let's start with 12L14. 50mm away from the chuck, 35mm diameter. I'll go with par feet this time. Definitely an improvement. Let's see with pre hard 4140. No power feed now. Yep. This was not possible before, now it's stainless. It's doable, but I think this part of tool is too thick. Maybe I should bring back the HSS plate. 
Yeah, that feels so much better. Now I'm able to cut off stainless. What about 4140 with HSS? Ok, I'm convinced, parting off has become significantly easier. What about turning? That's twice what I could cut before. And now something stupid. Definitely I couldn't do any of these before. I'm not saying I'll be taking cuts like that from now on, but you get the idea. The machine changed. I understand that ideally the tool post would be more rigid sitting right above the cross slide. But this started as a compromise and in the end I'm pretty happy. I think it worked well. Now we can start thinking about adding some other tooling to the top of the block.